Hey, hey, hey! It's a rhyme back recap! <laughs> Hi, I'm Skank Cocaine, and you can find me everywhere Instagram, you know, anywhere. Skank Cocaine. I live here in the Blue Ridge Mountains with my husband, my daughter, my son lives out, has moved out of the house. <laughs> uh, a dog, two cats, and a bird. Yes, I've already filmed this once before, but the lighting was horrific. It was a overhead lighting. I should have known better. I didn't bother using my ring light. I should have known better, but I didn't. I was dumb. I was dumb. Okay, so are you ready to hear about my weekend? I'm going to premise this by saying that I know you all, if you're in the knitting world, that you've probably heard about the Wool and Folk fiasco. I'm going to give you my interpretation of the experience. Now, I will say that I am not, I don't have accessibility issues. I was not a vendor, right? Wasn't a vendor. Um, I basically, I'm in the world to the point where I was really going to see what other indie dyers were doing. Would I, okay, let me just start from the beginning. But what I'm trying to say to you is that is that I may not say things you want to hear. Uh, you may not agree with me on everything that I say, but I want to tell you my experience. And maybe in the comments below, if you want, you'll tell me your experience. Thank you for everyone that reached out and left comments about Empty Nest. That was really interesting to hear. It's so funny. It's like generations before people didn't talk about menopause. Like, you heard about vaginal dryness and hot flashes, but you didn't hear about shoulder pain and hip pain and all the stuff, you know, and it's the same with Empty Nest. I don't feel like a lot of people talk about Empty Nest, or maybe they're just starting to. So it was really nice to get a lot of input. I know I'm not alone, and I know I'm going to feel better at some point. So that's great. But this is all about Rhinebeck and the satellite events surrounding Rhinebeck. So here we go. I went to Rhinebeck with four other people. Laura, Sarah, Leslie, Stephanie, and me. It was the five of us. We went together. We had dyed yarn for Rhinebeck. We dyed all the same base color which was like a camel color and then we dyed fluorescent colors for the top green melon orange highlighter yellow and pink i knit the green and the pink leslie knit the melon laura knit the orange and stephanie knit the highlighter yellow so i knit two sweaters I didn't get all of the sleeves done, as some of you know, but I could have. We'll, we'll discuss as we get closer to the sweater, the Rhinebeck sweater, because that's kind of, you knit a sweater for Rhinebeck. Okay, let's start at the beginning. So Stephanie and I had bought the dinner portion, the Wool and Folk, let's see what it's called. It's called the Warm Up Experience. Here was the goodie bag. The warm-up experience. Okay, $250 started, it was from five to nine, and you got a dinner, and there was like music and stuff like that, and I thought, shopping, dinner, you know, I wanted to be all there, all for it. I want to do all the events. Like, that's kind of because I'm in the industry. I want to go to all the events and see what they're like. So, we pulled the trigger on those really expensive ticket. Now, $250. Okay. So, we get there. And we get there late. So, we actually didn't get there until like quarter till six. And so we start shopping, 
And the next thing we know, we start hearing this hubbub that the, that the shopping was about to be over and that the dinner was going to start. And we were like, we just got here. What are you, it's not going on till nine? No. So the shopping ended at six so that everybody could experience the food and the dinner. Well, no, I didn't want, so we were pretty disappointed in that. So that was disappointment number one. course it was muddy it was cold all those things the, the coldness that was good because we were wearing sweaters okay so we had the dinner the dinner was I would say it was pleasant it was tasty if you like fennel and there was a lot of rosemary I thought there was a ton of rosemary in all the food but here no there butter lettuce salad fabulous everything else just mis you know, mediocre. But basically what we ended up realizing we were getting is we, we, we basically spent $250 on a buffet dinner. Not a Vegas buffet dinner, a little small kind of farm to table type buffet dinner. Not worth $250. Definitely was not worth the experience at all. Um, would I do it again? Absolutely not. I would absolutely not spend that kind of money because $250 is a lot of money that you could be spending on yarn. So no. And then you got it. We got a goodie bag. So Stephanie and I both got a goodie bag. Um, basically what was in my goodie bag was just like a bunch of postcardy kind of things like, you know, cards. It's, it's almost like, they, the the organizers went around and asked everyone to give something to the goodie bag and at this point the vendors were so pissed off because it was incredibly disorganized moving in that they probably like all they wanted to <clears throat> give was a business card like here you know they weren't going to give them anything good there were some things like discounts possibly discounts some were like stickers. Uh, but basically, I think I got a button, like a little pottery button. Uh, I'm not seeing it right at the moment, but let's see if I can find it. Um, this was another bag that was inside the bag. There was a bag from Ravelry. So it looks like Ravelry actually sent them some stuff. So there was this bag. Eh. Uh, there was this water bottle, a Ravelry water bottle. I got my Stanley. I, I don't, okay. This is the kind of things that people gave out. Here's seventh floor, two lifesavers. No yarn, lots of like tape measures. Like I got a bunch of tape measures. Uh, Golden Earth put in a button. One button? What am I going to do with that? Um, here's just some of the business cards that I got. This is a sticker. I don't know what was in this. I have no idea. Is this not in there now? Uh, yeah, lots of business cards. Um, I'm not sure if Laura gave me that or that was actually in the goodie bag. I want to feel, I, I feel like Laura gave me that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Laura gave me these. 
So never mind. These were not in the goodie bags. These were cute, like, badges. Yeah, that's about it. Now, Stephanie, she got the, you know, she got her goodie bag, too. She actually got something. Like, it, there was a company that had, or, or like this kind of thing, you know, $5 off or whatever. Stephanie had uh, some earrings in hers that were cut up knitting needles. I don't know what the brand is. I don't know what the company name is, but. So Stephanie got different stuff in hers. She got really good stuff. So there was some sloppiness in putting in the goodie bag. So I had really nothing of value in mine and she had some earrings in hers, which I thought was really nice and I didn't get that. And that kind of made me feel bad. You know, if you, everybody should be getting the same thing. If we all paid 250 bucks, we should all be getting exactly the same thing, but we didn't. So I thought that was weird. So that was, so that was another disappointment. The goodie bag was pathetic, absolutely pathetic. With as much money as you spent to get in, that was pathetic. I have done many, 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 many goodie bags and you put yarn and all kinds. You could have put some barber cord type things in there. I mean, those don't cost anything. You buy that cording for like a dollar, for like 75 yards or something. I mean, that wouldn't have been hard to do that. So that was really disappointing. Uh, so we left and we went home. And we had a nice time just sitting around knitting in the house, all of us together. And we had a really chill evening because, because we were gonna wake up in the morning and we were going to have breakfast, which we did. We went to bread alone and then after breakfast, we went to Cakeapalooza. So there are three satellite events outside of Rhinebeck that happened the day before. That's Cakeapalooza, Woolen Folk, and Indian Untangled. So we opted to go to Woolen Folk and Cakeapalooza. We should have gone to Indian Untangled too. That looked like a great event with really great vendors. So next year I'm coming for you. But this year we went to Cakeapalooza and I had a really good time going and seeing Robin at the Yarnberg truck. My yarn was on there and that was fun. And then I just basically walked down, you know, I saw Margaret at Bobolero's. She gave me this really cute lighter that, it doesn't have butane, butane in it, but I'm going to put it in there and give it to Marcella. She will love that. I don't really have use for a lighter. Not that Marcella has use for a lighter, but in case Marcella becomes a crack addict, she'll have this, you know. Okay, and then, and then Margaret, and sorry Margaret, these are all crumpled up, but she gave me this adorable, adorable little progress keeper, Tiffany, breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, that and then she gave me this fabulous bath bomb that she made herself mm, so good so i can't wait to use that so that was bobolero's then i said hi to vita lifestyle i said hi to amy at knit collage i went to fashion school dropout and i bought a set of minis i don't know they were just doing it for me it was raining hysterically and it just felt like i wanted to get something fun because lord knows i don't have enough minis in my house right now one of these days i'm going to take you into my office and you can see what i actually the stash that i have because what i do is we'll dye yarn and i'll take one for me one for you one for me whatever so this was very cute so i got that I also got a skein of her boucle. I thought that was really gorgeous. Again, I dyed boucle. I don't need to buy any yarn, but it was, you know, sort of fun and whatever. And then, uh, let's see, I saw, uh, I said hi to, um, 
Button Jar Studios. She makes bags. She has the most gorgeous long gray hair. Absolutely gorgeous. But I bought a bag from her, which is my first bag. It will not be my last. It has like velvet on it. It's like a beautiful tote bag. Beautifully made. It's full of my stuff, my purse, so I won't show you totally the inside. It has a nice fabric on the outside. I love this bag, so I've switched over to this being my purse for a while. So I got that there. Then I went to a shop that I think is in either Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. I'm not really sure. Jan, I think, is the name of the owner. And I bought Cory Confetti, which I had wanted for a long time. I bought four skeins of this. I really needed to, you know, I was trying to buy the least amount because my bill was like $200 for four skeins. So if you do the math, that's really expensive yarn. It's like 40 plus, you know, $48 or something, a skein, which I think is pretty outrageous. But, but you know, if you set, if it sells, if something sells and you buy it, then it's worth that, right? It's supply and demand, and if and people must really like this. So I'm gonna pick some, I don't know what I'm gonna do, some sort of crop sweater or something to wear over black or something. That's what I'm gonna do. My yarn was actually wet when I got it, and I was wringing some of it out. Believe it or not, that's how much it was raining. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so I got that. And that's all I bought while I was there. I, I had intended to buy something from Christina and Dolphina, everything, but I just, I think it was just raining so hard and I started getting really waterlogged and we were also nearing the end of our time there. And so I just decided to, um, we, we just decided it was time to move on. So, and I saw so many wonderful uh, people that had bought my, my uh, Last of Us Advents. Uh, I saw a lot of people that have the Bowie Advent that they're going to get and just just some lovely customers of mine, now friends. And I would say that Cakeapalooza, because it was a timed event, it was never felt like it was really that super busy. Because unlike Woolen Folk, that was not, didn't have times slots for people that was just okay so next we go to wool and folk where do i begin okay so it was at some point you take an event that is had already changed locations very very close to when the event was going to start a location that you've never had an event there at before and then you throw in torrential rainstorms. So you've got mud and you've got accessibility issues. Supposedly some people like in wheelchairs got stuck and, and one fell out of the wheelchair and got stuck in the mud and couldn't get up. And I mean, it's like everything that could go wrong for Felicia went wrong. Felicia is the organizer of Woolen Folk she used to own an LYS in um, New York called String Thing Studio, which she uh, has now closed. And I think this is like her, the thing that she does to keep herself involved in the knitting industry. And uh, she, Jake at Kenyarn, he, he basically said, Felicia lost control of the event. And that is exactly what happened the organizers lost control of the event. It turned into a just a horrific experience for people. The vendors, um, there was no directory to tell people where to go to find their favorite dyers. So they had to just kind of wander around and nobody had ever been there before. So it's like, oh, there's another building over there or there's another tent behind there and it's raining, you know, and Now, there were some vendors that did 
very, very well. So here is what, so what has happened subsequently since the Woolen Folk fiasco is a lot of people are really angry and hurt. A lot of customers were really angry because they couldn't find places to park or it was just too crowded and they were in mud and they left. And then the vendors, there were vendors that were upstairs where you couldn't find them. There's like a little tiny elevator to get up to the fifth floor in one of the buildings. And, and the vendors up there were really mad and, and their customers couldn't find them because there was no directory, like Dragon Horde Yarn and Knit Cafe Creations. And there was just a lot of people that were just so angry because if they said anything to the organizers, I think they... They actually were mistreated by the organizers too, or dismissed. Like there was a lot of dismissiveness and things like that. So there's these lists that are compiling now of to support these vendors now after the event has happened. Now, what I say that is, is there's like links, like you can go and you can, you know, click on the links of all the vendors and go there and buy stuff from them. But I just want to, this is where you might disagree with me on this one. There were vendors there, like, let's just, I'm going to say it, Lamb and Kid. Lamb and Kid had a prime location, you know, their neon sign, they had lots of room, they had Jackie running around picking, uh, Big Birdie for her shrugs and her Soho Square, you know, so she, um, Sarah, the owner of, owner of Lamb and Kid, you know, she has assembled a team of designers and, and, and people and she had a, a really good spot and so she didn't have to worry about the weather. Um, she had a little private bathroom right next to her. There was a little bar over, it was no, coffee or anything that would have been good like a coffee bar but they sold out of big birdie so do you really need to go to their website and buy anything from them they had an incredible event they made thousand I mean, 30 50 thousand hundred thousand i have no idea how much they made but they don't need your help it's the little indie dyers that were stuck in a corner in the rain um there were, you know, or they didn't have lights for their booth and then it got dark or those are the people that yes, you should support. Should you, should you feel sorry for Lamb and Kid? No, no, you don't need to, you don't need to worry about them. They had a great show. I don't think Magpie, I mean, I haven't read what Magpie has had to say about it, but I can't imagine that. Lola Bean yarn didn't sell, for instance. I'm sure it did. I'm sure Magpie sold yarn. I'm sure they did. Uh, I don't think all of the vendors need help. That's what I'm saying. If I'm wrong, say below. But, I mean, it's kind of a joke um, how some people did really, really well and then some people were treated like dirt. So that, that was Woolen Folk. Um, is Felicia done? Will she be able to bounce back from this? She did post something today. She actually posted an apology today. The first apology that she did, uh, there were so many like grammatical mistakes and misspellings and stuff. It was weird. It was like she rushed to put it out but didn't proofread it or something. And then eventually, <coughs> eventually somebody uh i guess told her that there were a lot of mistakes in that in that uh, apology and so she took it down and reposted it without with all of the the things fixed um was it a good apology do you want me to read it to you um yeah i'll read it to you hold on Okay, let me read it to you. Okay, all right. Here we go. 
To the wool and folk community, I want to apologize to the knitting community. The transition to a new venue this year was more challenging than I could have ever anticipated. Logistics coupled with the severity of the rainstorm made accessibility and crowd control difficult for us. That's why you have timed entrances, spots where you go at a certain time. That's how you do it. We know that already. We know that's how it works. Uh, I'm sincerely sorry that our accessibility goals were not met and I'm equally disappointed in the way the day transpired. I had hoped and envisioned a great experience for everyone. I'll be taking a hard look at the ways that I can improve Wool and Folk and I promise to bring you the wonderful and inclusive Wool and Folk event that you have grown to love. To the vendors, I offer an apology to you. Wool and Folk will continue to promote you and your business by sending emails to our guests with links to your sites in order to support your businesses. To the Wool and Folk sponsors, I appreciate your support and I understand that this was disappointing for you as well. Thank you. I'm sure it wasn't to Lamb and Kid though. Thank you for supporting Wool and Folk and I hope that we can continue to do better for your brand as we grow together. I learned some hard lessons this weekend. I hear you and we'll be doing better. With the utmost sincerity, Felicia and the Wool and Folk team. Okay. I did some math. I did, I got a calculator out because there was another post from someone that talked about how many tickets were sold for Friday. Close to 2,500. Okay. So 25, and the tickets were $55, I think, either 50 or 55 to get in. For Friday. So let's just do the math right there. $55 or $50 times $2,500 is $125,000. Then let's say there's 200 people for the $250 ticket and you've got $50,000 right there. $50,000 for Friday and then so and then that's not including the booth rentals. The $800 maybe for 10 by 10 and Lamb and Kid probably had two or three booths. So there was a lot. So I'm going to guess, if I had to guess, $250,000 got brought in during that event. Two hundred fifty thousand. Um, that's a lot of money. I have put on retreats before. I used to put on one called Pearl Jam, and it wasn't anywhere to the magnitude of that. I think I had like it, it was one of those where you stay over in a little hotel and you have classes, but it's so like a small little boutique retreat. I had a hundred people, which was a lot, and the vendors and everything. So I know what it's like to put on a very, very small event. So I know that it is hellish. And out of that, let's say 200,000, you know, thinking about all of the people you have to pay, you have to pay the event, the, this event space, you have to pay people to help you, like to sit there and check people in and doing all that stuff. And I understand, but you've got sponsors too. And those sponsors are paying for the food probably. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if those sponsors paid for the entire meal, the buffet that the people had. So Felicia got a lot of, a lot of money was brought in. I also heard some things about her GoFundMe. She did a GoFundMe to help her pay her rent for her yarn shop. And I heard that she took the money in and then she closed her store. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know any of these things as being facts, like what I just said. I don't know if that's a fact or not. The fact of the matter is, is that she has a lot of rebuilding to do because this is one of the worst PR nightmares that I think I can remember. Um, did I have fun? Yes, I had fun. Why did I have fun? Well, I mean, I saw people like, like the skein scoop there. I saw them, you know, I got a million hugs from them. If you don't watch their podcast, you need to watch it because it's great. I mean, I could listen to those ladies chit chat about their lives all day long. 
I saw Matthew at Clinton Hill. Um, I must have hugged him like 1,500 times. I saw Adela. I saw um, so many people, and I just love them all so much. And so for me, you know, these fiber events have always been about the people for me and the community aspect of it. So just wandering around and like seeing what's going on and, and being at the event so I could see the dinner and then the next day and everything. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I did it. Uh, but I'm curious to see how things are going to be in the future. So while we were there, we saw Caitlin of Caddy Jacks. She invited herself to dinner and we all were like, do we want her there? Do we? Yeah. Okay. We'll let you come to dinner with us. And she brought her husband. So she brought her husband, James, and we all went to this restaurant called The Red Onion. And we had dinner there and we just had an absolute blast. We had an absolute blast. I just love hanging out with all those girls. It was really fun. James is really fun. I didn't get to hear him play his harmonica, but maybe another time. So that was dinner and then we went to bed and we got up and bam, here we go. It's Rhinebeck day. And the second we, and of course it's raining, there's mud everywhere. You know, The second we got out of the car to walk towards the Duchess fairgrounds, I mean, literally got out of the car, locked the door. Already people were like freaking out about our sweaters. You know it's going to be good when you get out of the car and you've not even like walked three steps where you start hearing stuff all around you and people stopping and taking your picture and you know people loved our sweaters. They loved them. So we you know we basically um, we won Rhinebeck. We won it. We got the gold medal. Uh, we walked in. We we conquered it. I did not buy a single thing except for a potato at lunch, but I had the best time. I got to see so many of you and you came up to me and you talked to me and you gave me a hug and you told me everything's going to be okay and I'm going to get over empty nest and that you loved my sweater and I just could not love this community more. I could not love it more. It is the best. and. We got there on the hill at two o'clock. We had pictures of our, our uh, in our sweaters, and we I gave out mini skeins. I had uh, Stephanie and I had dyed up um, the special on um, minis, like little tweed minis. Um, who did I see? Uh, okay, I saw Jennifer at Pairs Well with Knitting from Canada. Again, if you don't watch her podcast. She is a delight. She's like your best friend as soon as you meet her. She's a charmer. And I saw her. I saw Amy Palco and talked to her for a while. I gave her a little mini skein. Again, it's like meeting a loving family member or your best friend that you haven't seen in years. We know these people because we watch them. You know, we watch them and we feel like we know them. So it was a delightful experience. I met the Crayabea. I, let's see, what else? Who else did I see? M1 Yarns. She has a great podcast as well. M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers podcast. Again, I'm going to link all my lovelies, all my girls and guys, you know who you are, uh, down below. And you can go follow them and um, see them. The people that hate me, I never saw them. They were one of those, like, if I've got beef with someone or they don't like me or whatever, I never saw them. Like, I guess they were like, they'd see me and they would, like, go behind a pole or something. I just never saw anybody that I was like, uh oh, I gotta like hide. You know, you know how it is. Come on, poor girls, guys, we know how it is that there's people that we don't wanna see or there's people that don't like us because you can't please everybody all the time. But <laughs> I didn't see anybody I didn't like. I didn't see anybody I didn't like. I loved them all. Um, I just don't wanna forget anybody. Uh, 
Let's see. So we were there as long as we could we could muster. It started slowing down. I guess maybe three or four. We we got tired and we we were just gonna go back to the place and get you know wine and cheese and pickle wickles and cheddar cheese on crackers and wine and, and knit in our pajamas. So we kind of knew the siren call of just, you know, getting off our feet and everything. Uh, so we went home and we, we laughed, we cried, we got to know each other. It was great fun. Uh, we woke up in the morning and we said our goodbyes and Leslie friend tried to give my friend Sarah this cowl and Sarah was like, oh no, she wanted it. She's like, oh no, you know, Sarah's the kind of person that would change your diapers when you're an old person. That's why she's my bestie because she's got a heart of gold, but she's like, oh no, Leslie, I couldn't accept it. And I'm like, I could accept it. And so Leslie's like, okay, you can have it. So she gave it to me and it has a little black heart on it for my black heart. I'll take it off. This is friend to friend. This is her shrug. This is her pattern. And so everyone go and buy the friend to friend shrug because we're all gonna make them. They don't take any time to make. They're out of Hugh and me. I mean, they're an affordable yarn and it's so comfortable. <laughs> It's so comfortable. You know, it's just the thing that keeps your shoulders warm. It's just exactly what you want on your, you know, the chilly days. Oh, look, I, she put a little, she has her own tags. Look at that. Leslie Friend. Leslie, you're the cutest. Is that your signature too? I need to get, I need to get my own tags. I need to get skin cocaine tags. For sure. But anyway, so Leslie, I got a friend to friend. A friend. See, you can make the friend to friend shrug and give them to your friends from one friend to another friend. Isn't she clever? I just love her so much. I love all my peeps. But anyway, we, we just had the best time. Uh, Leslie Friend should be doing a wrap up, uh, a Rhinebeck wrap up. And Part, I hope what she's going to do is she's going to tell the story of the traveling underwear that happened to me and I'm going to let her tell that story instead of me telling the story but it's it's a funny one stay tuned for that I bet she's filming any day now if she hasn't already filmed because you know you want to get these recaps out because you want you know you want to um, You want to remember everything and keep, you know, when it's fresh, you want to be able to get it out there. So I'm sure that she's going to be posting soon, but we had the best time. And even though there was drama, because there's always drama in the knitting industry, always, always, always. Why? Because it's a big group of people that are all over the place in terms of socioeconomic. Um, they're, is that why? I don't know why it's so drama filled, but it is. It's so drama filled. It's so, it's, yeah. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever, ever, ever trade it because I guess it's how people that do what is it like com comic con or something or you know the cosplay people you know that's a really I mean people are really into that or Dave you know Dave used to he doesn't really do it much he's doing models right now but he used to do like little paintings like little figurines if you ever saw a 40 year old version and 40 year old virgin and Steve Corral is painting little figures with a like a magnifying lamp or whatever that's what Dave has done and for many years and that's you know when we he and I first started dating that's what he was doing he was painting little men like historical war 
war figures, not like Warhammer stuff, not like that kind of stuff, but but like historical stuff and little jeeps and little you know plane like army planes or whatever. And uh, what was the point I was trying to make? Oh, that is also you know really close knit community with lots of people that are a niche, you know. But the knitting industry is just, it's just bonkers. And I love it. I just love it. So, anywho, did you go to Rhinebeck? Were you there? Were you at any of the events? What was your favorite event? Uh, if you didn't go, are you going to go next year? You better. Uh, are you going to room with me next year? Yeah, you are. Okay, so I guess I'm going to upload this and get this out into the world. Uh, okay, let's see. I do need to do an update, like, on... Um, what was it? I do need to do an update on the Stephen West thing. I have officially decided that I am not doing it. I've seen how the other clues are coming along, and it's not for me. So I'm just going to be... I, I'm not doing it. I'm moving on. That's okay, though. Not anything to do with the first clue at all. I just don't want to do it. I think it's my colors or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just, mm. and another piece of news before I say goodbye to you is I also am going to do kits for the, the Rhinebeck sweater. I will tell you that I've been receiving very many emails about shock though, you know, Leslie sweater because Leslie is, is, is a supermodel. So she, of course, looks beautiful in her clothes. And so she looked, I think, so great that everybody wants to make her colorway. My green was amazing, I think. Someone wants pink too. But anyway, I'm going to do kits. What I might do is do the basic camel body skeins. You can pick those, pick how many you want. And then you pick your colorway. So the Leslie, you know, the Lara, the Sarah, the Stephanie, and then you pick how many skeins you want for the color work. I only used one skein for the color work. No, you need two skeins for the color work because this isn't normal color work. The sweater goes down, actually goes down your sleeves. Normally raglans, when you do color work on raglan sweaters, it doesn't go down the sleeve, but this did. So you actually need, I think, more than one skein of the color work, but probably just two. So two skeins of the color that you want, and then the camel color. We will be putting those on the website as a pre-order as soon as I get a little more headway on the Bowie Advents. We are still not done dyeing the yarn for those Advents. And we're in trouble. We are starting to get behind because they have to get to everybody before December 1st or you're not going to get it in time. And there are international, there's Canadian. These things have to go out mid-November. That's like in three weeks. Ah! I can do this. I can do this. Anywho. Um, that's it. That's all I got for you. I know I'm missing something. I mean, I know there was more to it like what am i knitting i'm knitting a marceline sweater for marcella she wants for halloween on saturday night what's today tuesday so i have to knit an entire raglan sweater between now and saturday okay wish me luck <laughs> okay see you soon that's it for today until our next conversation bye